मिडिवल इंडिया चैप्टर नंबर इलेवन पेज नंबर वन थर्टी वन रीजनल लैंग्वेजेस ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड लिटरेरी वर्क्स ऑफ हाई क्वालिटी वर प्रोड्यूस्ड इन मेनी ऑफ द रीजनल लैंग्वेजेस एज वेल मेनी ऑफ दीज लैंग्वेजेस सच एज हिंदी बेंगोली एंड मराठी ट्रेस देर ओरिजिन बैक टू द एट सेंचुरी और सो सम अदर्स सच एज तमिल वर मच ओल्डर राइटिंग इन द बिगनिंग ऑफ द फोर्टीन सेंचुरी आमिर खुसरो हैड नोटेड द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ रीजनल लैंग्वेजेस एंड रिमार्क्ड दीज लैंग्वेजेस हैव फ्रॉम एंशंट टाइम्स अप्लाइड इन एवरी वे टू द कॉमन पर्पजेज ऑफ लाइफ the rise to maturity of many of these languages and their use as a means for literary works may be considered a striking feature of the medieval period there were many reasons for this perhaps with the loss of prestige by the brahmans sanskrit also lost some of its prestige the use of the common language by the bhakti saints was undoubtedly an important factor in the rise of these languages in fact in many parts of the country these early saints fashioned these languages for literary purposes it seems that in many religion regional kingdoms of the pre turkish period regional languages such as tamil kannada marathi etc were used for administrative purposes in addition to sanskrit this must have been continued under the turkish rule for we hear of hindi knowing revenue accountants appointed in delhi sultanate later when the delhi sultanate broke up local languages in addition to persian continued to be used for administrative purposes in many of the regional kingdoms thus literature in telugu developed in south india under the patronage of the vijayanagar rulers Marathi was one of the administrative languages in the Bahmani kingdom and later at the court of Bijapur in course of time when these languages had reached a certain stage of development some of the muslim kings gave them patronage for literary purposes also for example Nusrat Shah of Bengal had the Mahabharat and the Ramayana translated into Bengali Maladhar Basu also translated the Bhagavat into Bengali under his patronage. His patronage of Bengali poets had been mentioned earlier. The use of bhakti poems in Hindi by the Sufi saints in their musical gatherings has been mentioned before. In Jaunpur, the Sufi saints such as Malik Muhammad Jaisi wrote in Hindi and put forward Sufi concepts in a form which could be easily understood by the common man they popularized many persian forms such as the masnavi fine arts this is the last topic for chapter number 11 and it is on page number 132 fine arts trends towards mutual understanding and integration are to be found not only in the fields of religious beliefs and the jewels architecture and literature but also in the fields of fine arts particularly music when the turks came to india they inherited the rich arab tradition of music which had been further developed in iran and central asia they brought with them a number of new musical instruments such as the rahab and sarangi and new musical modes and regulations indian music and indian musicians at the court of the caliphs at baghdad had possibly influenced the development of music there however this systematic the systematic contact between the two began in india under the sultanate we have already referred to amir khosro khosro who was given the title of nayak or master of both the theory and practice of music introduced many perso arabic airs ragas such as 
Aman, Gora, Sanam, etc. He is credited with having invented the sitar, though we have no evidence of it. The tabla, which is also attributed to him, seems, however, to have developed during the late 17th or early 18th century. The process of integration in the field of music continued under Feroz. The Indian classical work Rag Darpan was translated into Persian during this reign. Musical gatherings spread from the ad- ad- abodes of the Sufis to the palaces of the nobles. Sultan Hussein Shariki, the ruler of Jaunpur, was a great patron of music. The Sufi saint Pir, Bodhman, Pir Bodhan is supposed to have been the second great musician of the age. Another regional kingdom where music was highly cultivated was the kingdom of Gwalior. Raja Man Singh of Gwalior was a great music lover. The work of Man Kothuhal, in which all new musical modes introduced by the Muslims were included, was prepared under his ages. We do not know at what time the musical modes in North India began to differ from those in South, but there is little doubt that the differentiation was largely due to the incorporation of Persio Arabic modes, airs, and scales. A distinctive style of music, influenced in considerable measure by Persian music, developed in the kingdom of Kashmir. After the conquest of Jaunpur, Sikandar Lodi followed the tradition of patronizing music on a lavish scale, a tradition which was adopted by great Mughals later on. Thank you everyone for tuning in. This was the final lecture or the final video on chapter number 11 that is cultural development in India. From now on, we will be starting with chapter number 12 that is struggle for empire in North India part 2 the Mughals and the Afghans. On your screen right now, you must be viewing some playlists which we have created for all of you to view. We'll be making some future videos on editorials and other chapters for history, economics and other chapters that are necessary for us to read. Do stay tuned and keep supporting us by subscribing to the channel and leaving in the comment section and telling us your recommendations and your commendations. Thank you everyone in advance. All the best for exams and do well.